You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Welcome to this episode of Life on Gabriela TV. My name is Tatiana Mallory and today I'm in Puerto de Morgan, Canary Islands, Spain. Have you been thinking about how the new Gabriola community plan may shape the island? Current day Puerto de Mogán is a planned resort community as imagined by Spanish urban planner Rafael Neville. Like Gabriola, it has a fascinating history including Spanish exploration as well as present day environmental and density challenges. What else do these two island communities have in common? Let's find out. Puerto de Mogán is located on the southwestern coast of the island of Gran Canaria. Gran Canaria is the third largest island of the eight major islands of the Canary Islands, which are about 100 kilometers off the northwestern coast of Africa. This archipelago also has many smaller islands and islets. It was formed by volcanic eruptions millions of years ago. Similarly, Gabriola is the third biggest island of the 12 southern Gulf Islands, which have over 200 smaller islands and islets. It was also formed by volcanic activity and then further carved by glacial ice. Gabriola has a resident population of approximately 4,500 people. In the summer, that number climbs significantly with summer residents and tourists. The municipality of Mogan, which includes Puerto de Mogan, has a population of approximately 22,000 residents. It also attracts a huge number of tourists, averaging 850,000 visitors annually. It's particularly popular as a holiday destination for Northern Europe. Visitors from England, Germany, and Scandinavian countries come to escape the winter as the Canary Islands have a mild climate with warm winter temperatures and year-round swimming. Water on islands is often limited. To supplement the underground wells, desalination plants were built on Gran Canaria in the 1960s. These plants supply most of the water needed in Puerto de Mogán for both residents and the tourists. There are more than 20,000 desalination plants worldwide, including a small number in Canada. For a short time, one company in Souk on Vancouver Island was the first company in Canada to sell desalinated bottled water from the Salish Sea, but has now reverted to selling sea salt and other sea salt products such as soap. Desalination has become controversial as it is expensive, energy intensive, and harmful to the marine environment. However, the United Nations considers water to be at the center of the climate crisis. Gabriola does not have any desalination plants and people rely on wells and cisterns for their water. The first known inhabitants of the Canary Islands were related to the Berbers from Northern Africa. Traces of an ancient Canarian Aboriginal settlement built more than 1500 years ago can be found in the mountains around Puerto de Mogán. It's called Cañada de los Gatos. Located at the mouth of a ravine, there was ample running water. The soil was fertile from volcanic activity and there was close access to the sea for fishing. In addition, the climate was subtropical. Caves were carved out of the mountainside for sleeping, and there were many communal areas. For a small entrance fee, you can tour the archaeological site yourself. In addition to offering some insight into how the ancient Canarians lived, it has a great view of the current town and the beach and harbor. The Snenemic First Nations people have lived on Gabriola for thousands of years. Gabriola also has a Spanish influence. 
The Spanish visited in 1791 and named the island Gaviola, which later became Gabiola. A British cartologist made the mistake of adding an R. As a result, we have the name Gabriola. Various European nations explorers like the Portuguese, Romans, Arabs, French, and Mallorcans tried to conquer the Canary Islands, but Spain colonized them in the 1400s. They became the base for explorers headed to the Americas, including Christopher Columbus. The name of this archaeological site, Cañada de los Gatos, translates to Valley of the Cats. Today, you see many stray cats making use of the shade and the comfortable sleeping areas of the caves and throughout the town. The cats, just like the tourists, take advantage of the climate. Both tourists and residents feed them. Two hundred years ago, Puerto de Mogán was a small fishing village with fishermen dragging their boats onto the beach. In the 1960s, Rafael Neville, Count of Berlanga, moved to Puerto de Mogán. Neville was a Spanish artist who had an aptitude for architecture and had already designed the more well-known and popular Spanish tourist resort town of Torremolinos. Neville envisioned a resort vacation area in Puerto de Mogán. He designed the current village so it would maintain the architectural characteristics of a Spanish town, and it was rebuilt in the 1980s. Golden sand was imported from the Sahara Desert to enhance the beach. Breakwaters were also added to establish a calm swimming area suitable for all ages. Land was reclaimed from the Atlantic Ocean to build the fishing harbor and marina. Canals were built for drainage, and little canals run under the bridges adding to the picturesque charm of the village. Today, Puerto de Mogán is affectionately known as Little Venice. In addition, the pedestrian-only walkways along the beach and marina offer lots of space for pleasant strolling. During the construction process, buildings were restricted to two levels high. On the ground floor, Restaurants serving local Canarian and Spanish food and numerous international dishes line the beach and marina. There are also many shops. Above these are apartment vacation rentals draped with bougainvillea. Walking away from the beach, there's a wide pedestrian boulevard that leads to newer, larger, more modern hotels and accommodations set amongst leafy bushes and palm trees. Puerto de Mogán is now a prime vacation destination, and of course, tourism is its main industry. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to stay tuned for more episodes of Life on Gabriel TV. Bye!